So the grass got a little tall with all that rain, and we have beaten the tar out of our mower, trying to get everything knocked down. But I had somebody ask about what to do about mosquitoes, and this year it's been particularly bad for mosquitoes and uh, what we call buffalo gnats, which is actually a type of uh, black fly. And I've heard of people in multiple states losing birds to those gnats. And so this guy was wanting to know what to do about that. Well, the problem is, is mosquitoes and gnats and that kind of thing thrive in the conditions that this year has presented us. And by that I mean they like really wet conditions and they like cool conditions. And mosquitoes in particular need uh, still water sources and shade and tall grass and that kind of thing so excuse me if you can dump your water pans out at night and fill them up again first thing in the morning that's going to help you out tremendously right there because it's going to break the um life cycle of the of the bugs number two keep your grass and your weeds and everything mowed short if um, you've got a bunch of stuff piled up that you can move and you can move it so that you can get some airflow coming through the area do that and try to expose it to the heat and light of the Sun and those things all together will help combat the issue So, there's also been some people saying that uh, hanging um, like bits of cloth or cotton that are dipped in vanilla extract will help. I haven't tried that personally. This guy's a little jumpy. He just came here a couple hours ago. Um, he's not actually for me. He's for somebody else. Um, they've been looking and looking and looking for a rooster like this for their hen. And so I came across one and picked him up. So he's over here in quarantine by himself. And of course you saw these pens over here. I got two sets of these built now. <laughs> And the jury is still out on whether or not I'm going to continue building more like this. Um, there's a couple of reasons that I do like them. They're low to the ground. In theory, it'll keep the rain off of the birds a little easier. You just lift this top lid to get into them. But I'm going to do a separate video on those another day. We've also got the uh, old brooder put together. And I've got the first batch of chicks in there. I didn't take all of the chicks from the first uh, set and put them out here yet because I want to make sure that these ones do okay. If I don't think they're doing okay, I'm going to pull them and take them back in the house. So they're kind of just hanging out under the heater. And I've got this uh, heat lamp over here that I've kind of rigged up just to, in case they're getting cold, but I don't necessarily think they're getting cold. I just think that they're not used to the wire floor yet. And I think that another thing is that it's kind of dark in here. So look at there. You can already tell that little blue there is a cockerel. He's already getting a decent comb on him and he's only a week old. But these are the Bantam Andalusians. There's 20 of them in there. And you see, I um, haven't put the top one together yet. I didn't put the bottom one in yet. Um, 
but that's where I'm sitting at right now. We've got a power strip here. It, it had a power strip that came with it, but I decided to put a new one here. And I've got this uh, magnet up here to tell me what the temperature inside the room is. Been doing all kinds of stuff lately. I uh, got a little feed storage area set up here that's all mobile. So that's good. We set up this uh, feed wagon. I'll talk about that another day. The egg bucket. But got that going on. just finished this one the other night so I still got to pick up around it but I decided to put the two bearded gold or sorry two bearded buffs together and see if he'll actually mount the hen successfully we've been having a doctor in most of the spring uh, well basically off and on ever since we got him to tell you the truth but if that don't work I'll put him over here by himself and then I will just take him out to and try to AI artificially inseminate that hen. It's a little too late in the year to be messing with this stuff but um, the way my year is gone I kind of don't have a choice but to hatch late. And I know these next ones will make somebody pretty happy because uh, they commented on the other day. I think they'll be happy to know. The Bantam Hoodens have made their way to the farm. That's the original male. And their daughter from last year in the background, she's non-bearded just like her mom, unfortunately. Here's the original hen. So they're both non-bearded, but they got the five toes, which is great. And they are laying. Um, what else has been going on? Well, I had two sets of eggs hatch off now. The first set, we did real good on our hatch rate. Uh, Johnny, I was going to text you the picture of the chicks when they came out, and I had to get a new phone, so I got to run through and get your phone number off the emails again. But, um... I got two chicks out of the round head, so that's pretty exciting. There was a third one, but it didn't make it because it, it didn't hatch out all the way. Uh, the second set of eggs, unfortunately, I, I just completely screwed them up. I don't have anyone to blame but myself. But um, what happened was I uh, kind of got crunched for space in the incubator. And I put all of the eggs from set two on one tray. And then once I candled set three and I threw out the infertiles, I had room to divide up set two's eggs onto two trays for hatching. And when I pulled the tray out, I basically left it out too long. That's what it amounts to. I left it out too, too long and as a result, a bunch of the eggs got chilled, so I lost um, multiple sets of eggs out of that group. So um, I think I only ended up with 18 Polish, or no, less than that, less than 18 Polish, and I got one Bantam chick that I honestly don't know if he's going to make it right now. And none of the game eggs from that bunch hatched. So, pretty upset with myself for that happening. These two old girls are finally healing up. They got into it the other day. Tore each other up pretty good.
I decided to take the Bantam Andalusians out of the breeding pens and put them out here, but if I don't have a good hatch on these next two rounds, I can put them back into breeding pens because all of these hens were being bred by that single male, so it's not like I have a clean out time or anything that I have to worry about. Here's one of the brassy back stags from last year. I put him in with this three-year-old hen just to give him something to chase around and to exercise. And then I put the other one with the sister to this hen in another pen. I got a lot of mowing to do yet. And honestly, I should stop and sharpen the blades on the mower but I can't get down like that to take them off so I think I'm just gonna push through it the stupid way and once I get everything knocked down then I'll take it to my neighbors have him sharpen it and then I can come through and mow it proper In case you've been wondering about how the injuries have been doing, um, my leg is pretty much, I think the last time I, I kind of put a number on it with a the therapist, we feel it's at about, oh, 80%. My arm, on the other hand, we think is around 40%. Here's our turkey which I've been informed has been named Yum Yum because he's going to be Thanksgiving dinner. And you know, I wouldn't have never thought about it, but putting all them uh, pine branches in here has allowed the grass to grow so that it doesn't get completely trampled. Anyway, that's all for today. Everybody have a good one.